We're delighted to have you back. So this is our show, Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. This happening to be your our 308th episode, and you are about to be our 17,000 viewer, as you see down there, which we appreciate. Us is uh, the Trouble Triumvirate again uh, this week uh, with uh, Yuda Soto Brown, a Bishop Museum historian, uh, but now in your Asipov designed a diamond head home. Hi, Soto. And we got you, Martin Ancelini, up there in Manoa. And we got here the other Martin Despang, a little further down the hill from you, DeSoto, in Waikiki. And we are on our second, uh, seventh time of membering Lahaina and thinking about what could one do. Um, almost, I wouldn't say impulsively, but spontaneously. Uh, because we're sharing what you have been coming up with, Martin, uh, during the first couple of uh, weeks into the semester in our uh, DR uh, program here. And while the slides are already running through and your tropical exotic birds are entertaining us, uh, DeSoto, uh, let's get started talking about what we're going to talk about today because we added uh, several slides to the show. And um, I would like to kick it off and try to talk about uh, the human factor. So how do we basically in, inhabit the whole thing or how is the whole thing going to get inhabited? And we threw in, uh, we somewhere see in the 28th, the president of yours, uh, Martin, and we also somewhere in the slide 9, 10 and following, um, we want to talk about that in slide 12, if we see this later, um, I want to chip in my childhood experience of having uh, grown up in something not unsimilar, which is what uh, the conspiracy theory people have been jumping on because they might feel there's something too good to be true about it. And that is the 15 minute city where you can actually do everything without having to, uh, you know, drive your car or go through any other effort, everything that you need to do in your in your life, you can do, uh, you can do within within walking. But then again, you can get out, you don't have to be stuck there. So I pass it on to you with this slide, because you just provided that Martin. So tell us what we see while the slides are moving on. But we remember this one. It is simply the 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 human factor as you were, were telling before. No, we uh, need to recreate or to uh, uh, keep in the in what will happen in Lahaina uh, the the people on the street. No, the the what is like uh, this. Uh, we were talking uh, previously about this organic factor of keeping people living uh, um, uh, freely. Uh, spontaneously, and this is what makes Lehaina Lehaina. Uh, uh, the cities that are just an image, we are also talking about the museification of cities, uh, are very uh, uh, vulnerable to disappear. Now, the what Lehaina, even if it is destroyed, it's still existing in, in memory. No, uh, uh, of course, in archives, but mainly in memory of the people that had a relation with Lehaina. So this is what have to be recreated. Uh, probably not exactly the same as it was. This is a big question that uh, I, I am I don't I don't feel uh, uh, with the authority to answer it. But in any case, it should keep uh, the 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 human factor. And the human factors in terms of urbanism is people in the street. Simple, no. Uh, we need to 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 generate bring ice to the streets, like ground floor ground floor uh, open. Uh, market, commerce, people buy, cars don't buy. Uh, uh, and then uh, what was shown in this previous uh, image in, in slide 10 is that we can also, uh, uh, in, in, a, in a more, let's call it radical approach, uh, generate a macro infrastructure that can provide shelter and services as resiliency that we were also talking about here uh, to guarantee uh, uh, these basic needs to people and also to make the people starting to negotiate, let's call it negotiate, but interact uh, and build a life. No? Martin, let me ask you a question. Uh, 
because Martin just said that, and this is very important, he grew up in a city where transportation was mostly by on foot. Um, and I'm, and of course, many other countries have excellent other types of ground transportation as well, including Germany and urban areas. So it's not as car dependent. What is the transportation outlook for your plan for Lahaina? What transportation is there and where does it run? I I would go to keep the cars out, uh, uh, probably, uh, uh, and it's simple, no? It's like providing good shape, providing a, a good, let's call it circular, circular public transportation system, Lehaina, and uh, even Waikiki, no? And uh, is it, uh, small enough to to be able to satisfy the needs with public transportation, and then biking and walking, no? People will make exercise today. There will be a, a big event here in, in Honolulu about a walkability, and this event will be promoted by the Department of Health. No, so it is also related to health. Uh, and then, of course, we need to provide the right. We need to provide uh, uh, services, food, and so on. And this could be delivered in some hours, in some in some specific moments, even with bikes. But we can also. Uh, uh, or, or people, for example, ambulances or uh, fire trucks or uh, uh, or the cars of people that cannot ride a bicycle or walk uh, could also like have uh, access with some kind of let's call it restrictions that uh, would, would generate like a, a very idyllic uh, environment on my point of view. And let's say you're actually attending an event this afternoon with people of the Department of uh, Health, and that is about that. I will also add that a colleague of yours that was with us so many years ago, he came from a fellow Latin American background and from a city in Mexico where the mayor used his right to basically do that uh, overnight. He had his, his staff people basically put up barriers, block the streets and make it walkable. And there was a big cry out first from the business world and they were all I'll say, you are killing us. It only took a couple of days, he told us, of that flipping in understanding, uh, feeling, uh, experiencing that actually people who walk shop. People, people who try to desperately try to find parking, as here in Waikiki, as you mentioned, uh, they get upset. Uh, they get ripped off. Uh, they have to pay 50 bucks for parking for a couple of hours that they could actually spend for, you know, in the city, in the shops, in the stores. So it has proven in that, in that, in that example, in that case study to actually work. So, so that in mind, we, we should look at other experiences and practices and, and let them be, you know, comfort us and motivate us and inspire us. Absolutely. Let's talk about this slide here while it's running by. So this talks about the human factor in, a, in the second way, because it seems inherent to human nature that what you just talked about is one thing, is being out and about and being social. But there is times when the human being seems to want to have and want to need to and want to want to want to do the opposite, is basically be hiding away from others, be by yourself. And this part we actually seem to overdwell on with the... Uh, dominant uh, uh, post um, contact architecture that this is what Western architecture does because it also has to do it for climatic reasons to not get a frostbite. But here it seems to be predominantly done because people don't even eat on the street anymore, uh, but they all eat inside and they're all gonna dwell inside. So what is your counter proposal for that? based upon your experience and, and share the project. And while the slides have, will have been running through, we can actually go back to 28 and 29, but start explaining to us. The, 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 the concept is simple. And then the story of that project is, is, is fun. Uh, is uh, architecture have the solution? No, we, we can provide uh, alternative enclosures uh, different than the wall. The uh, the permanent uh, wall. No, we there are many ways of of and this uh, the the lanites are that no and uh, and sometimes and then also in like uh, in uh, if, if you if you start looking 
uh, rural housing. Rural housing tends were, normally was very enclosed, with, in many cases without any windows, you know, because people was like killing part of the landscape and the, the moment of, of sleeping, of, uh, of uh, having intimate moments, making love, whatever, was uh, uh, um, or, or is you know, a moment in which you want to be enclosed. But this is why uh, where architecture appears and, and, and the, uh, the approach of that project was just to understand walls as doors. No? We, all the time we are moving architecture. We are opening doors, opening windows. Uh, um, and uh, in, in, in that sense, we can also manipulate, manipulate the whole structure. So the idea could be no, to generate a big, uh, a big uh, uh, structure that again was providing these basic services, but all the rest could be a, 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 a just flexible enclosures that could be manipulated by people in that project, in the Solar Decathlon project uh, for, for Latin America that we did uh, in 2015, uh, it, it was fun because we didn't have enough money to build a like full enclosure. So we did a material that is called the Sterilla, which is basically the bamboo. They open it like this, no? They open the, the bamboo and the, it is like ki kind of a, 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 a permeable uh, uh, vegetable uh, surface. Very cheap, very, very, very cheap. And we use that to cover the whole building. And then the uh, thermic performance of that building was the third within 15 projects that had these super ultra sophisticated enclosures. No? So the, 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 the lesson is very simple is we can generate enclosures that can uh, leave air pass and uh, uh, be open. For example, we were closing the, the facade uh, uh, the east facade in the morning, and then we're, we were closing the west facade in the afternoon. So we were controlling heat uh, with the human factor again. No, so people uh, just uh, uh, this is the this is the project where we are we are seeing it here. Uh, the, the 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 architecture was very flexible. Even the kitchen was we were able to move around the kitchen. No, and we're, there were models that were moving around depending on the time of the day, um, and everything was full of hammocks and uh, mezzanines and so on. Uh, and and that was the argument, no? And the, the jury gave us the first prize in architecture because of that, because they, when they were evaluating the project, our students were there sleeping in the house. They were using the house. The, the other houses were closed because they don't want it to lose heat and blah blah blah. And they said that in the in the in the report, no? So this is the this is a good example of of flexible architecture and and again human factor, no? People uh, manipulating architecture. And look at that again from the inside out. 20, next slide, 29 again, please. That's again, when we were looking at the hammocks as a proposition recently on, uh, on, a, on a recent slide, probably people would have said, well, that's sort of uh, very kind of romantically, um, you know, envisioned. And some people say, you know, when you have a vision, you see the doctor. But this, this shows uh, that you can make this reality. So because um, in, in all respect for all the emotions and um, that are going on still and will be for forever about the tragic uh, fire and having killed people and burned people's places down, I, I think what we're bravely saying is that um, we should bring back all the good stuff, yes, but we should maybe not repeat the not so good stuff. And what also went with Lahaina as the Soto, as you pointed out by surveying it and going there and finding out, and, and Martin, there is also people from your cultural background there and they are not on the upside of society. They have the low paid job, they have places there where they pay two big rents, and now they get ripped off by predators, capitalist predators, and $3,000 for a studio. That we don't want to bring back, right? We want to bring back the good parts, but the bad parts. So this is trying to solve the bad parts in trying to eliminate what I like to call the terror of tropical territorialization where you get stuck in uh, having to own and paying a mortgage for the rest of your life, or you're stuck for the rest of your life with too high rents and you're always fearing to be evicted. So this is trying to go against it, but it, it is not that easy. Well, it is actually easy, uh, but 
uh, you have to make that shift of mindset of, of letting go to bedrooms, having let go to bathrooms. And, uh, there will be there will be services for that. Don't worry about it. You will be served, but in a different way. You use the term freeing yourself, right? You want to expand on that a little bit on top of my interpretation of it? Yeah, I, I, I would just, with, just to compliment, like saying that this uh, way of living or, or, or this project could also provide a very uh, uh, like ready-made alternative for what is happening now. Uh, the, the, the image of this very finished house will, get, will require more amounts of money, more time, more time for the people living in in the in the uncomfortable conditions that uh, are are living now in, in, in Maui, so probably this this uh, strategy could provide us a shelter, while or maybe that could become permanent, uh, if this is the decision, or uh, or just understand it as a as a as a provisional shelter that could be inhabited meanwhile, and then. Uh, dismantle, let's say. I, I don't believe too much in dismantling things because it's like uh, 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 um, useless, but could also be uh, work as a, as a provisional structure, uh, easy to, to build. And this uh, this could also, t yeah, go ahead, DeSoto. I, I was just going to say too, Martin, you, you mentioned earlier that the number of, which I was surprised, the number of Latin American citizens there were in Lahaina at the time of the fire, because I didn't realize that there were that many people there from particularly Venezuela and Ar Argentina. But the point I wanted to make was uh, this type of living is somewhat communal. In other words, there's a lot of interactivity with individuals rather than people being off in their own individual rooms. And that actually is goes along with what has been happening in Lahaina because many, many people are were sharing the same homes, sometimes related and sometimes not because housing was so tight and was so expensive. One of the things that you could do under this type of system would be to say, okay, everybody who isn't uh, part of a family, if you are an immigrant and you don't have any family here, let's put all of you together into one or two structures where we can put all of the single people who don't have a lot of money and who need obviously uh, shelter just as everybody else does. So in this way, you've got more freedom of people being able to move around between different structures. If it is not as structured, if it is not as compartmentalized, which for the workforce of Lahaina, as it, as it currently is or was right before the fire, also allows you to take care of the people who are, as you said, Martin, um, at the low end of the economic scale because they're doing the jobs that a lot of other people won't do and they don't have a lot of money and they need places to stay but cannot afford the regular rent. Communal living would be, for them, very, very good because they would be paying less money to be sheltered. Yeah, and if we go to slide 30, 32 quick, I want to say something hot off the news of our school here also. We're talking education here, by the way. Uh, there were uh, some uh, emails sent to separate uh, colleagues ours from the great Shigeru Ban, who we all admire. Uh, he's a Pritzker Prize a winner from 2014, and he reached out and has indicated that he uh, is will be engaged in rebuilding Lahaina. We're very excited about it, and we now maybe make the pre-conclusion, well, probably not, but he's probably uh, invited because he had made himself a name, amongst many other things, of be a disaster relief architect, predominantly known for his work in unbelievably using cardboard tubes and he's been doing this all over the world. Also, he has done a nomadic museum out of cargo steel shipping containers, but I collected these two because I, I think these have to do with your project. Uh, one is the curtain house here on the, on the left side, and one on the right is 10 years later in Zurich, where he was using a very heavy uh, tectonic timber, and that's where, where you are going. And, and I, one would hope again that, um, that again, the, uh, it's not just you know um, 
you know, the way the students, the, the university will be involved is actually in a way uh, uh, that uh, when we go back to tw 28, it's as, as you guys were involved, Martin, as you really trust, you know, the, the power of the emerging generation, as you did in, in, in this project here, slide 28, um, Michael, thanks for bringing that back. And we should share because the audience might not know what the Consola de Caslon is. So it's a national competition program that architectural schools predominantly from the U.S. participate. But then there are some uh, rebels from other countries as uh, as yours. And uh, the Germans have uh, been provoking and having won consecutively twice uh, in, with the University of Darmstadt as well. And it's it's a great way of what bonded foster is, is is called we call design build, where you figure something out and then you also make it actually happen. And there is a faculty mentor. In our case, uh, one was supposed to be uh, the sort of we touched on that here and there. David Rockwood was spearheading that, and because of politics, unfortunate ones, it didn't happen. But this should also again encourage us to actually. Uh, not just quiz uh, sort of wisdom uh, and 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 people who are established, but also, you know, take advantage of the 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 breeze of fresh thought of the emerging generation and basically trying something and maybe along these lines of risking as well. And for that reason, I want to share and motivate you with the slides 33, 34, 35, and 36, if we can have this one through. Because that was me uh, pretty much where you are right now, Martin, some now many years ago, where we had the expo in 2000 coming and we won, like you, a competition for talking transportation, which you were asking DeSoto to go to the expo and, and design these tram stations. And we were so brave um, and, um, again, young and crazy that we wanted to make uh, what you try in your project too, to make basalt fly. You make it even more crazy with this stuff here, which is our basalt core that we guessed from uh, Christian Kleiner up at the Austrian border in Germany. And Christian just uh, sent us an email this morning and said, hi, how's it going? And so it's going well, Christian, we will send the show to you and the previous ones. And um, it was not without doubt and not without risking because by that time, which uh, slide 35 shows, there was, and there's, sorry, no comparison. There's, when it comes to tragedy, you cannot compare, right? I want to get this straight to begin with. But somehow, uh, you know, strangely, uh, the same number of people have been killed in an event at that time, uh, half around the world. And that was this this tragic train um, uh, accident with a high speed uh, train ICE that killed around a hundred people, and the guy in charge of that was also in charge of us. So while um, I also encourage all of us pedagogues to encourage you guys, and not uh, you know default back to playing it to save because my professor in school at slide 37 actually also in addition there professor tokatsu i had as my structural professor he was encouraging me from the very beginning if we can get that slide 37 i didn't find he's so humble there isn't even a, a, a picture of of bernard tokats out there but he was my professor in school and he encouraged me uh, with having been the auditing engineer on the project, but when uh, the uh, the guy uh, above him had to basically then um, step in, uh, and some of the basalt pavers started to crack. Both of them basically uh, uh, were coming down and cautioning the client and saying, uh, "Don't go too extreme. Don't don't go too paranoid." because it's gonna be good because we know the system is, uh, meaning that there's a crack doesn't mean there's a failure. And in fact, never any of the pavers fell down and someone could have been hurt, although it's only three feet. It never happened, but it needs this sort of oldness and braveness of people who know what they're doing and encouraging the emergent generation to explore. And that's what you're doing. And that's, I want to pass on that tradition now 
and do that now in, in your case, that yes, it is very brave what you're doing and very out there, but you come with your heart at the right place and you want to try something with uh, fitting the show, uh, a human, humane, um, um, you know, mindset. And that's why we're here to endorse that and support you. Right, Soto Soto? Absolutely, yes. And uh, I think that, uh, well, Martin, did you, did you, you started to say something and we, we went on another tangent, but will you, do you want to complete that right before we come to the end of the show? Yeah, no, just, just adding that, uh, disasters will keep happening all over no i was recently in new orleans that was dramatic no uh, but it's happening all over no we were also talking about what the vulnerability in all the pacific region manila buenaventura in colombia and mexican coast uh, also i mean of course there are countries uh, in the global south which are more vulnerable because they are not ready but also could happen in Hawaii, could happen in Japan, could happen in, in the mainland US, in Europe, and so on. Uh, so we have, of course, we have to prevent. Uh, and uh, for attending the, the post-disaster situation, which is dramatic because uh, it is basically the first thing to attend is people, no? the people that was like that, that is in that situation. We are talking from, from the outside in, in any case, but uh, uh, we have to, to, to act uh, creatively, let's say. We have to use this, uh, I won't say as an opportunity, but as an emergency. Uh, the, the word emergency is interesting because we can make ideas emerge. No, We have to think differently about, about how to react to, to this crisis. Uh, and in the same moment, uh, to be very pragmatic, because we have to act fast, to use the money, uh, put the money where it should be, uh, but also uh, uh, to stop doing the things that we were doing that caused the disaster. The disaster is not happening because of nature. It is happening because our relation with nature. No? So uh, uh, the, 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 the more creative and the more pragmatic we are, which is not contradictory, it is actually complementary, uh, the better it is. No? On that great closing note, I, but we feel this needs another round. So see you back for that next week. And until then, please stay uh, bravely bold boldly brave bye bye